Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Phyllis reported that she and Danny had been conversing like friends in the jazz lounge, sharing so much history, but that Danny had suddenly grown monotonous. Danny declared that he was impressed by Phyllis's efforts and her attempts to change her life. She said the bug was out to get her, telling Danny so. Danny inquired as to if Phyllis thought that something someone had said would force him to reconsider his feelings for her. Phyllis regretted. Old habits, she claimed, died hard, and she became extra cautious when it came to the bug. She was asked to stop calling Christine that by Danny. Phyllis consented to cease. Danny informed Phyllis that following a difficult breakup with Paul, Christine had returned to the city. He requested that Phyllis cease assuming things about Christine and to leave her alone. Phyllis conceded that he was correct and she would cease. Phyllis expressed her hope for no one to experience what Christine was going through. Danny claimed to have observed Phyllis's effort. Phyllis stated that she wanted to start meditating and that she was making a lot of effort to break old habits. Danny claimed that he had been practicing transcendental meditation for years and that it had been incredibly beneficial. He was asked to instruct Phyllis. Danny informed Phyllis that she wouldn't have to be at the whim of her irrational emotions because a licensed trainer could help her control them and channel all that untapped energy. He was asked to hook Phyllis up. Danny declined her invitation to supper claiming he already had plans with Daniel and Lucy. Phyllis inquired whether Heather was also in town. Phyllis assured Danny that she had learned her lesson and would not meddle in Daniel and Heather's affairs. She declared that her family came first. Danny invited her to go with them. Christine and Nina gave each other a hearty greeting at society. Christine reported that having an honest conversation with Nina and not feeling judged for her love for Danny felt good. She admitted that she felt bad because her relationship with Paul had just ended, but Lauren had told her that Danny had been at the athletic club with Phyllis and Daniel, so she had gone there after leaving Nina. She explained that she had to go as she knew Phyllis would disparage her in front of Danny. She mentioned that Daniel had asked her to sit at the piano while he performed and that Phyllis had departed with him. She claimed that because Danny was an excellent listener and that she had ended up opening up to him, being with him was simple. Christine informed Nina that although she and Danny were once again friends, there was still a lot of past between them to sort out. She acknowledged that emotionally, she wasn't in the finest place. Nina insisted that their simultaneous arrivals in the same town were kismet. Christine insisted she wouldn't jump right in. She claimed that she had lost interest in being a DA and that her personal life was no longer her priority. She mentioned considering a career in corporate law or pro bono work. The hospital called to inform Nina that Chance had been shot. Chelsea admitted that Chloe and Summer had recently been at odds at Crimson Lights. When Summer came, she requested that they clean the air. Chelsea said that their variances in style were typical. Summer concurred and expressed confidence in their ability to find the ideal balance, but Chloe insisted she didn't believe it was achievable. Chloe informed Summer that nothing could be done and that the issue would only worsen. Summer wanted to establish a rhythm, but Chloe replied that with her hands on nature, it was difficult. Summer asserted that she had to be actively involved in the business as CEO, but Chloe countered that a rhythm could only be established between two individuals. A third voice would constantly make it difficult to be heard. Summer would find that rhythm and balance with Chelsea back, Chloe assured her, but she would always be the one fighting to be heard. Chloe stated she didn't want to be there. Chelsea stated she was unaware that Chloe was thinking of leaving when Summer moved aside to get a phone. It made sense, Chloe admitted, but she hadn't given it any thought until their encounter. Chelsea stated that since they were a team, it was illogical. Because Chelsea was the creative and Chloe was the facilitator, Chloe claimed that their team was fantastic, she mentioned that Summer was a fantastic facilitator for Chelsea. Chloe stated that she and Chelsea had always gone it alone, but Summer wanted to provide her opinion. While Summer was a CEO and could do as she pleased, 
Chloe felt that it wasn't right. Chloe said that Chelsea needed to create, but Chelsea said she needed Chloe. She claimed that after everything Chelsea had gone through, she needed to create something, and Marchetti provided Chelsea with a chance to do so. Chloe informed Chelsea that she didn't need to be at Marchetti because she was content with her life and where it was at. When Summer came back, she wanted to know what she could do to help Chloe stay at Marchetti. Chloe claimed that since Marchetti wasn't a suitable fit for her, Summer was unable to help. Chloe admitted that Sally had asked her to accompany her for a consultation. She had appreciated the way they had exchanged ideas and realized that was how it should be. Chloe insisted it was time for her to move on, even though she loved Summer and Chelsea and knew they would succeed together. Summer expressed that she could understand Chloe's desire to pursue a passion project. The women then heard Sharon on the phone, pleading with Esther to come over right once, since she needed to head to the hospital. After hanging up, Sharon informed them that Chance had been shot. Nate was shocked to see himself dismissed by Victor in his office. To keep him away from Newman, Victor claimed that Nate had planned to put him in some loony bin and surround him with doctors who didn't give a damn. Victor claimed to have spoken with the facility's head and to have obtained a comprehensive report. Nate stated that he had to make early arrangements in order to preserve Victor's privacy. Nate was accused of lying by Victor. Victor admitted that he had been staging his memory loss in order to find out who would betray him. Victor also admitted that, although he was happy that it wasn't Adam, he had been inclined to think so. Victor stated that he had to ascertain whom he could rely on. If he couldn't even trust her, Victoria inquired. Victor said that he had never seen her so furious after telling her he would return as CEO and demoting her. He asserted that Victoria had been more preoccupied with her status at that particular moment than with the boyfriend's actions. Nate had just attempted to assist, Victoria informed Victor. She said that Victor had given them reason to be quite worried about him and his memory loss. Victor asserted that he had taken the necessary actions, and the result validated his claims. Victoria expressed her sadness at Victor thinking that she would exploit him for her own gain, as she had been upset about her demote. Victor informed Victoria that he had workers all throughout the globe and that he had been observing his business gradually disintegrate due to internal strife and Nate. Victor claimed that he had played things the way he had because he had known someone had been plotting to seize control. Victoria questioned Victor about how long he intended to keep them in the dark. Nikki stated that she had wanted to inform Victoria, but that she would never have known about Nate's genuine intentions if Victoria had known the truth. Based on his years of medical experience, Nate informed Victor that he had provided a sound medical solution that would enable Victor to be identified and treated in the best possible way. Victor stated that Victoria and Nate intended for him to be in that loony bin in order for them to reclaim the authority that Victor had taken from her. Nate asserted that everyone wanted it to seem as though Victor was still employed and that everything was fine. Adam assured Nate that there would be no possibility of exposure or leaks, protecting Victor and the business. They all worked in the shadows, Nate yelled. He expressed sorrow for having let himself be drawn into one of those shadows. Nate insisted there had been no hidden agendas and that his plan had been ethically sound. Nate left after saying that Victor had done him a favor by firing him. Victoria trailed behind Nate. Victoria apologized to Nate for everything while they were waiting for the elevators. Nate, furious, questioned why. He inquired as to why she had disregarded the lone physician present and that she had been sacked. He said that Victoria hadn't supported him and that he had given Victor the best option. He had thought of them as a group. Nate said it didn't feel that way, but Victoria insisted they still were. He said Victoria was nowhere near as angry as he was, despite Victoria's claims to the contrary. Nate cut her off and yelled that she would get over it, even after everything she had done to show Victor how loyal she was. Victoria expressed her dislike for the way things had gone to Nate, but he accused her of abandoning him by supporting Adam. He claimed to know what her priorities were. If she hadn't noticed that Adam's scheme was a neat setup to subtly influence Victor from the inside, 
Then Nate said she hadn't been paying attention. Victoria denied throwing Victor to the walls, saying instead that Victor had done that to Nate and to all of them. She claimed not to have known Victor's plans. Nate asserted that as soon as she knew what was going on, she had complied. He said that although he was on the outside looking in, she still had her family and her career. Victoria insisted that there was a way to make things right, but Nate insisted that doing so would require her to make a decision she didn't want to make. While Victor hailed, Nate claimed he had wanted to protect Victor and give Victoria what she deserved. Nate said he'd made the mistake of thinking she would protect him. He vowed never to repeat that error. He departed. Nick said to Victor inside his office that Victor hadn't needed to go through all of that to get rid of Nate. Victor claimed that he had to test each one to find out because he was unaware that it was Nate. Adam claimed that they had all assumed he would be the one to use the circumstance to his advantage and exert some sort of power. Nicky conceded that they had, and justifiably so. Adam stated that he was disturbed by the idea that Victor had been psychologically deteriorating. Adam was told to spare them by Nicky. Nick expressed his confidence that Adam would take advantage of that. What benefit would he have received, Adam inquired. Victor expressed to Nick his belief that Adam had behaved in the best interests of both the company and himself. Adam was scowled at by Nick and Nicky. Victor claimed that because the three of them didn't get along, if there had been a crisis, it would have been disastrous. According to Nick, there had not been a crisis. Victor responded that Nick was unaware of that. He claimed that Adam had asked them to cooperate since he was aware of the potential consequences. Nick claimed that since Victor had broken up the hoax before Nate could be tested, they would never find out. Victor was informed by Victoria when she came back that Nate ought to have been given the benefit of the doubt. Why had Victor had to terminate Nate so abruptly, she wondered. Victor angrily declared that Nate had called the loony bin and that he had made plans for Victor to go from Newman, allowing Nate and Victoria to reclaim the authority that Victor had usurped from her. Nick stated that Nate had desired Victoria's advantage. More than being concerned for Victor, Nicky said Nate wanted Victoria to take the reins again so he could serve as co-CEO. Nate would have done anything, according to Victor, to accomplish that. Nate desired revenge on Victor, according to Victor, for demoting Victoria. Victoria stated that it made no difference how Victor explained Nate's termination and that he couldn't defend acting as though there was a serious problem with him because that had been harsh. Victor claimed that his gut had been correct and that he couldn't have taken the chance that she would tell Nate the truth. Victoria replied that when it came to Adam, his instincts were useless. She mentioned that Victor had stated he had anticipated Adam to turn on him. She said that, at the expense of people who loved Victor and wished to preserve his legacy, it had merely been a game to find a way to give Adam another pass and justify all the horrible things he'd done. She expressed uncertainty about her ability to forgive Victor for it. Victoria departed. Victor said that he was as clear-headed and intelligent as ever and that he would stop at nothing to preserve what he had created when Adam asked him to affirm that he was not experiencing any memory loss. Adam inquired as to their next move. Victor inquired about Nick's position. Nick expressed his understanding of Victoria's hurt, saying she had dedicated her entire life to protecting the things he had created. Victor claimed that because Victoria had observed Nate's increasing desire for power, she knew he had been correct in what he had said about the man. Nick expressed his gratitude to Victor for Nate's departure, but he was taken aback that Adam hadn't fallen into Victor's trap. Adam mentioned that he had advised Nick to unite for Victor, but Nick was unable to set aside his sentiments. Victor said he needed Nick at the company now that Nate was no longer there. Victor was warned by Nick not to count on Victoria for giving him, as she may view Victor's betrayal as one too many. Victoria texted Nate when they were in the reception area, asking him to return her call. We must speak. Nate saw Victoria's SMS message at Society. He texted Devon, Hey, are you free to grab a drink later? After giving it some thought, Devon shot back saying, Tell me when and where. 
Christine and Nina showed up at the hospital. Christine inquired about Chance's condition from the nurse. The nurse told her that in order to confirm the degree of the injury, they were awaiting the results of imaging. Rushing into Chance's room was Nina. She came up to him and informed him she was there, sobbing. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.